Culture, it's a word that holds different meanings for different people. But there are some shared human experiences that bridge cultural boundaries. And the gatekeepers to those experiences are cultural ambassadors, entrusted with bringing the world closer together, one note or one skyhook at a time. I'm Mike Walter in Los Angeles. Let's take it full frame. <laughs> He is a living legend, an icon of American jazz music. He began his career as an 11-year-old child prodigy, performing piano concertos with the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. In the six decades since, he's come to be recognized as one of the pioneers of modern jazz music, collaborating with musical giants and mentoring the next generation of jazz greats. And as full-frame contributor Sandra Hughes found out, through the years, Herbie Hancock has also been one of America's most influential cultural ambassadors to the world. Herbie Hancock says the spirit of jazz is the spirit of openness. And for five decades, music lovers have heard his message. Through jazz, barriers are broken. The music reminds us on a daily basis just how much we all have in common. Growing up in Chicago, he played classical piano. By his teens, he had tuned into jazz, still tickling the ivories, but to an entirely different rhythm. Hancock's early career put him on stage and in the recording studio with jazz greats like trumpeter Miles Davis and saxophonist John Coltrane. Their music has a, almost a philosophical message in it as well that would include things like uh, sort of expressing your personal creativity, not being afraid to go into areas that aren't your comfort zone. Kind of delving into the unknown. Hancock has made more than 100 albums, won 14 Grammys, and has his prints firmly planted in jazz history. In 2011, UNESCO named him Goodwill Ambassador to promote intercultural dialogue. Saxophonist Wayne Shorter and Hancock struck a chord as musical colleagues. At a certain point when you're playing whatever music you're playing, it can be jazz or whatever, at some point some musicians will, will become statesmen. And Herbie to me always like going into it as a statesman. A statesman who has played a note in every musical milestone since the 60s. He's famous for songs like Watermelon Man from his first album. And of course, his fusion of jazz and funk on Rocket. While Hancock has hit the high note playing jazz ambassador to the world, here in the United States, he's focused on educating the next generation of jazz musicians. Hancock is chairman of the Thelonious Monk Institute of Jazz. The mission statement of the Thelonious Monk Institute of Jazz is to preserve and promote jazz. And uh, there are many, many programs that we do. We do programs on the high school level, we do programs on college level, we have an international competition. Hancock helps teach graduate students on scholarships from the Thelonious Monk Institute at the UCLA Herb Alpert School of Music. The idea is for living legends to pass on their musical talents. Diego Urbano is a vibes player from South America. To get this scholarship to come up here and get your masters in jazz music, I mean, what does that mean to you as an artist? Well, it's basically a dream come true. It doesn't get any better than this. So it's the, the biggest opportunity I think I'll ever have. This year's students are rehearsing for their final performance. I feel like every teacher that's come in to work with us has given us sort of a different concept of music or a different direction to explore. 
So I kind of feel like I have information that I'm going to be exploring the rest of my life. It's really exciting. It's never something that you get used to. Um, when you have people like Wayne Shorter and Herbie, who you consider like people you've really looked up to since the very beginning, it's definitely inspiring and an up uplifting experience also. This is the graduating class of 2014. Herbie Hancock attended their final recital. The band played original works. The proud teacher and mentor took notes and was clearly as pleased as the audience with the students' musical growth. And for the students' devotion to the genre of jazz, Hancock says it best. Jazz makes a profound difference in all of our lives. A message that Hancock has spread to the world through music that is uniquely American but has connected continents and promoted unity everywhere it's been played. For Full Frame, this is Sandra Hughes in Los Angeles. Joining me now is jazz musician and chairman of the Thelonious Monk Institute of Jazz, Herbie Hancock. Herbie, thanks so much for coming in and joining us here on Full Frame. Yeah, thank you so much. So let me start with this simple question. Uh, what is it about jazz? Because I love this quote from you. It's, there's no judgment in jazz. You could perform anything. We started off by talking about how you did classical music. What was it about this form of music that really turned you on? Well, let, let me explain that phrase, you know, which says, there's no judgment in jazz. If you're playing with a group and you start thinking, I don't like what the, what the bass player played or I don't like what the guitar player played, the music just stops. <laughs> the music can't stop. If you're playing a concert, it has to go on. So the, the only way to make it work and the purpose of actually being there is to create something, give something to the audience, give something, something of, of uh, truth, something that you really feel, something that uh, you'll stand behind, something that... Um, is your feeling for the moment. And whatever happens, the object is uh, how can I turn this into something of value? That's what it's about. Describe for our viewers, because most of us will never have that opportunity to perform in front of a crowd. What's it like to bypass the ears, go straight to the soul or the heart of the audience? And you must yeah. feed off that, too. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a great energy. Uh, um, it, it requires focus. Um, but I've been doing it for so many years, um, my motivation and my trust um, and my determination, that was really the word I was looking for, <laughs> determination is, is so much stronger now when I perform than, than years ago. I guess that comes from experience. <laughs> It's so rewarding from the inside that uh, um, uh, there's, there's nothing else. There's nothing else quite quite like it. You know? I want to talk to Ambassador Hancock, but I want to ask one more. Uh, question about music and performing. What's it like as a young guy just starting out and just happenstance, you, you flip on the radio and there's your music. What's that like? What's that experience like? Well, uh, it, it, it really, of course, warms your heart. I mean, you think, wow, my music playing on the radio after years of hearing a lot of other people that you don't know, finally you're hearing your own music on the radio. I mean, when I was young, it was, it was the radio. It wasn't, we didn't have iPhones and, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, the technology that we have today. But um, uh, it was, it's, of course, great. It's a great yeah. experience. Imagine if you're yeah. in your car. I mean, shut up. I want to listen. Turn it up loud, I guess. It's still, <laughs> still kind of nice. If I'm alone, if, 
if I'm in my car and I'm alone and, and I happen to turn on the, uh, you know, the radio and, and something of mine comes on, you know, it makes me smile. I'm, I'm happy that, <laughs> that I'm, I'm uh, uh, you know, they, they thought enough of my music to play it. You know. Uh, so you get this goodwill ambassadorship, mm -hmm. and one of your first things that you're talking about is International Jazz Day. So take me back in time to that. What was it like uh, getting this post and then coming up with this idea? Well, um, this was maybe 12 years ago that I was, uh, that the Thelonious Monk Institute was asked to make a presentation for the end of what was called Philosopher's Day, an event that they had every year at UNESCO in Paris. And uh, the person that kind of was responsible for putting it together, uh, uh, Mika Shino is her name. And anyway, he, we put together from the Thelonious Monk Institute uh, a program for the end of that day. It was so successful. Uh, and in, in the process, I got to know Mika and uh, one day we were brainstorming just about life, about, uh, about conflict, global conflict, the, uh, the conflict just in general, uh, uh, and, and various subjects having to do with the issues of the day. And she liked the way I was expressing myself. She liked my viewpoint. And uh, she said, what would you think about the idea of being a good, goodwill ambassador? And um, I was thrilled that she felt that I, that I was suitable for that. Right. And the first proposal that I made as goodwill ambassador uh, was... International Jazz Day to establish one day, you know, which is April 30th, uh, every year as International Jazz Day. And it's a partnership now between UNESCO, the UN, and the Thelonious Monk Institute. You know, the Institute actually puts the whole thing together. Um, you know, but it truly is a, a global event reaching billions of people. And, and, and I'm happy to announce that, that this year we will have participation from every country on the planet. Wow. This kernel of an idea and hope that it would blossom into something special. I guess it's the same as when you sit down with the guys and, hey, I think I've got this great idea, we can make this song, mm -hmm. except this is much larger in a sense. Uh, mm -hmm. What's it like to have that kernel of an idea and then look, you know, to take it a few years later and say, wow, this is unbelievable? <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually turned out to be much bigger than we ever could have imagined. Uh, it, it reaches a billion people now. Jeez. What was also impressive to me was that when I made the proposal at UNESCO, um, it was immediately accepted within two or three days by the, the ambassadors from all of the nations in UNESCO. That's 193 nations. Uh, so it just shows that the appreciation of, of jazz and respect for jazz is huge. It's global and has been embraced by the world. So what makes it universal, you think? What is it about it that, uh, that's able to stitch together all these different continents, peoples? I think the main characteristic is a sense of freedom. It really is uh, liberating. Uh, as a performer, it's being uh, uh, in the moment, um, and we mentioned non-judgmental. Um, it's also about teamwork. I mean, there are a lot of amazing characteristics that are great 
not just for music, but also great for living. Um, it shows a, an amazing respect for each other, for the mu each of the musicians, really, truly respect and trust each other. It's also about um, uh, courage, not being afraid to explore the unknown. So the, a lot of really great things. And, and the idea of to take whatever happens and to try to turn it into to a flower, and to, to try to embrace it and find something or create something within whatever happens musically, you know, find a way to make it into something that works, that, that fits. I mean, everybody could use that in their daily life. <laughs> well, uh, three words jumped out right there from what you were saying. Great for living. How so? Well, because, I mean, all those characteristics are characteristics that we really need to exhibit in, in daily life. You know, it's important to be in the moment. It's important to be non-judgmental. Yes, there's a time for being judgmental. We have to make decisions about things. But, but uh, um, the, one of the most important things is respecting our fellow man. We're all the same people. We all come from the same root. And for us to be fighting each other over nonsense makes no sense. At the same time, um, being, having the, the courage to uh, think outside the box is very important. I mean, that's where the creativity lies, is not just taking what you know and trying to do something with it. But even being, not a, being unafraid to explore what you don't know and be, being able to, again, be in the moment and improvise. Uh -huh, uh -huh. All that stuff is, is, is great for daily, daily life. You're saying nonsense, no sense. I mean, who could disagree with that? It's interesting. It seems like uh, the world focuses on the conflict and maybe not as much on culture. And culture can bridge that divide in many respects, can it? I mean, it's interesting. I interviewed mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy Carter not too long ago. And one of the things that he talks about with great pride is the fact this exchange between China and the United States wasn't just, you know, it's not all just economics. It's that so many students came from China and got a taste of the United States, and so many people from the United States went and got a taste of China. And that, yeah. is, the, that bridge is really important, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, culture can really lead the, the idea of bringing people together uh, and, and cutting through the barriers that separate people. Because when you separate people, you also separate ideas. Ideas aren't always created by one person. Sometimes ideas are created by collaboration. I mean, that's what's so important. I have an experience I, I can uh, tell you about uh, that happened at the Summit of the Americas when President Clinton was in office. Uh, he actually took a jazz group down from the Thelonious Monk Institute, a student group that we had with a couple of uh, of uh, guest artists, I was a, a, actually a guest uh, working with the students, and and um, for all the the countries in North and South America, of course, we're, we're there in Santiago, Chile, and at one of the events was for each country to have a cultural presentation. So some of the countries had <laughs> huge orchestras with costumes. I don't know, maybe they had acrobats and <laughs> clowns. I don't know, but huge production, right? We had a small, you know, sex tet, I think. And we didn't have any special costumes. Um, and we just went up there and played. And I could feel, it was tangible, that whatever jealousies and, and egos that w had been in the room by, oh, wait till you see our country's presentation, and that kind of s spirit, you know. I was, I was feeling that in the room before. When we started to play, it cut through all of that. I could f feel people feeling just comfortable with each other, the ambassadors feeling comfortable with each other, you know, and, and it was the music. It was jazz that was, that was doing that. Wow. And the next day, 
President Clinton had a, a, a small thank you event, he walked right up to me and he said, thank you so much. He said, he said, what you guys did, did more for international relations than any diplomats could have done, than any ambassadors could have done. That's amazing. I, I, I want to talk to you about teaching, but I, but I also want to talk to you about something that um, usually when you go up on stage, everybody's listening to you. And what I thought was interesting, you've, got, you've traveled, you've been to Russia, you've been to China, and I know you've said, I'm going to go and I'm going to listen. So you're kind of on the receiving end. What have you learned uh, by listening? Uh, what are some of the things that you've come back with? You know, you actually mentioned one of the most important characteristics of jazz, too, which is listening. So it's very important to me to be able to listen. It's, it goes beyond listening. It's absorbed. You know. Yes, the ears are involved, but also the eyes are involved. You know, the senses are involved. Uh, uh, to absorb something from the culture. And uh, in doing that, it, it gives you some sense, some feeling for the people. It, it, it brings you closer to them. I mean, you feel closer when you actually listen to the, to the music of another culture. You, you become a world citizen in a way. I know that yeah. teaching's uh, big for you, and, and you've worked with so many greats, and I'm sure you've, you've learned so much from them. And I'm sure it's a, it's a big part of, of passing the baton. How important is that for you? Oh, it's of the utmost importance, especially today. I'm, I'm 74 years old now. And so the idea... You look 44, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. I think you need my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> um, our young people are our future. And I know that even when, when I was young, when I was first learning about jazz, there were so many musicians that helped me, that brought their experience and shared their experiences with me, you know, gave me guidance, uh, encouraged me. And so, especially at this point in, in my life, I want to do the same thing. It's, it's my turn to, to follow that, that uh, tradition and um, and it's wor it worked for me, so I'm, I'm sure it will work for them. As we look back on your past, that 11-year-old kid uh, doing those concertos, here you are, 74. Uh, talk to me about that arc. Uh, could you have ever imagined uh, what your life's been like, not just on the stage, but just all of these experiences that you've been able to have, uh, and music's actually giving you that, that venue to do that. I've, I've had a great life. <laughs> I've had a, a great life. I mean, it doesn't mean that, that I was born with a silver spoon in my, my, my mouth. Uh, everything hasn't been roses, but fortunately I've been able to uh, overcome and defeat um, uh, any of the obstacles in my life that where I could have been the victim, somehow I've been able to survive and, and, uh, and overcome and learn. You know, there's value to having obstacles. Or else, how would we grow if we didn't have obstacles? That's how we learn, you know? When you're a kid and you, and you, you learn to ride a bicycle, right? What happens? You don't just start and you just go off and to the sunset, <laughs> you fall, you scrape your knee, you know, but eventually you learn. So um, th this process is, is Im important, you know, and uh, so in my, my life, even with the ups and downs, I've always uh, been a positive person uh, and I've always been a curious person, and, and, and I've learned the importance of being open-minded. And, and as a result, I've been able to get uh, great uh, uh, opportunities from life, and hopefully I've uh, 
been able to take those opportunities and and turn them into uh, something of value. I mean, that's what that's my goal. The obstacles, in a sense, give you the wisdom, which probably also guides the direction of your music in a way, and probably influences the type of music you produce in a way. Yeah, but, you know, everything is not roses. <laughs> so um, uh, it's um, important to be able to recognize. Uh, take responsibility for your mistakes, but not be burdened by guilt. Uh, to be able to accept what has happened, but always work on improving, always work on, on growing, always having a sense of never giving up. And the fight against your enemy, and your enemy is yourself. It's your own, in Buddhism we say, fundamental darkness. It's the part of yourself that's always telling you, hey, they're not looking, why don't you go steal that? Or, you know, it's the one that's giving you these bad ideas. You know? So fighting against that part of yourself, and everybody has that, it's your evil twin. Right? <laughs> so so um, uh, uh, music has been a way to uh, f help me to focus on being creative. And because jazz has such great characteristics, and and through that and my practice of Buddhism, you know, putting all of those things together has really helped me to to make some really good choices in my life. Well, I heard you say you quoted Miles Davis one time as saying, "Don't ever finish nothing." <laughs> Fortunately, we have to finish this, and I right. wish we didn't. But it was a great fun chatting with you. Thanks so yeah. much for coming in. Thank you very much. Coming up, there is no doubt, as Herbie just demonstrated, that music is an invaluable tool linking cultures. But sports can unite people across cultures as well. And we'll be joined by a sports icon, turned cultural ambassador, in just a moment.